Hey, gang, you're in the darkened room. Yeah, that's right. And we have merch now. Check it out. Link is in the description. We have t-shirts. We have hoodies. Yeah, put us on your body. Damn straight. And uh, also hit the like button. Uh, hitting the like button will help out the YouTube algorithm. Recommend our videos yeah. to, to people that may not have heard of us yet. So it'll help us grow. Yeah, and leave your comments and suggestions. We have a lot of ground to cover on this channel, but we're always looking for topics and stuff that you want to hear about. Mm -hmm. So uh, drop us a line. We read everything that you send. That's right. And share with your friends. If your friends haven't heard of us either, right. uh, send them a link. And, uh, of course, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. That way you can know when we uh, release new videos. Exactly. Yeah, social media links are down in the description as well. We're all over uh, Instagram and, and Twitter. We also uh, are going to start doing uh, live streams on yeah. Instagram. So you can you know be notified as to when we do those. Awesome. All right, so let's press play. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the darkened room of music conversation. I'm Darren. And I'm Chris. And today we have another special guest with us we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. We have a world-renowned bassist, Matt Dice. <laughs> <laughs> don't, well, thank don't, you for that. Yeah. Don't, be, don't be shy. Matt Dice, of course, uh, from All That Remains, later CKY. And uh, yeah. Matt, uh, first of all, thank you for joining us today. We got a special episode. We're going to be talking about our favorite Rush songs. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but, be but before we get to that, we're going to talk about you a little bit. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your musical history and kind of bring us up to date to where you are these days? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, I started pretty young, just piano lessons at, at four um, and, and, and was with piano and clarinet all through growing up and going to grade school, elementary school, all that stuff. Um, and then, of course, once adolescence hit, uh, guitar was the cool thing. So I switched over to that. It was uh, time to rock. <laughs> and I, I started taking lessons with Ali Herbert, the guitar player of All That Remains, when I was 13. Um, yeah. So Ali from All That Remains was the biggest influence on me in terms of playing guitar. Um, I, I didn't start with bass immediately. I, I, I started with guitar um, and then was in local bands all throughout high school and found um, there was kind of a uh, glut of guitar players. So there weren't as many bass players. So I, I said, you know what? I got fat fingers anyways. Let me go switch over <laughs> to the full string. Yeah. You, you lost a couple of strings and started playing bass. Uh, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so in, in and then uh, in one of my later lessons uh, with Ollie, he had mentioned that their bass player quit. And I jokingly said, oh, I'll play bass for you guys. And, you know, I'm, what, 19 years old at the time or something. And he's like, yeah, absolutely. Are you free this weekend? And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So, you know, that that was like a Monday. And then that weekend we were out in uh, Albany, then Providence, Rhode Island, did a short little van run. and then. Pretty soon it, it was like, oh, we we got a record deal and tours and I, I got to finish college or do I? And, you know, <laughs> Amazing. It, was, it, it all happened very quick. And then from there, uh, all that remains for a couple of years, um, I got the opportunity to join CKY, who at the time was a little bigger than all that remains. Uh, sure. Not so much the case now with the two bands, but, um, you know, at, I was 21. I jumped at the opportunity to go tour with them and i i quit a year and a half ago so right pretty much all all my 20s all my 30s just on the road with cky nice and i know that currently and this is how me and you met uh you are currently playing with who i happen to feel is the best singer on the planet tristan mcintosh how did you meet her mm -hmm. and uh how did that all come to be so uh I, through TJ McClear, her uh, former drummer, yeah. um, he was a friend of mine from back home that we played in a little side project metal band for a bit. And then out of the blue, he was like, I'm moving to Nashville, Tennessee. And I knew nothing about Nashville <laughs> other than just coming through town and knowing this is where like all the tour buses were and all the crews right. would pick up. Um, and I was like, all right, that's a little weird. A few years down the line, um, you know, I, I noticed he was playing with, uh, this a girl from American Idol. I didn't know much about it. Um, 
and then when I moved down, it turned out I lived a quarter of a mile from him, which in Nashville is rare. Yeah. You, you know, it's like you meet someone, it's like, oh, where are you? Lebanon. Oh, where are you? Ashland City. Cool. We'll never see each other. You might as well right. live in Arkansas. Right. Um, so, yeah, he was in Bellevue just right around the corner from me. And uh, when I moved down, she was, I guess, kind of had a revolving door of bass players. And immediately, like within a week of moving here, I had a gig. He was like, here's 30 songs. Let's uh, let's play with Tristan. And I started playing with her and I, I was hooked. She's yeah. like you're saying, one of the best singers uh, around. And, and, and not, not, not just singing. She's just an incredible talent and an incredible human being, too. It's like when oh, you yeah. get to know Tristan, you become part of her family, you know? Yeah. It, yeah great person great family and and yeah not just singing like you, you you'd be playing something she's like when you went uh from a g to an f sharp right there it, it created kind of an odd harmony between what i was and it's like i i'm just playing riffs like I, I don't, <laughs> she, she her harmonic ear uh everything it's just perfect pitch she's got it all yeah, she really does. One of the most talented people I've ever been around in my life. And and for, for full sure. disclosure, I help her book shows locally. So <laughs> I'm yeah. not just a fan. I'm involved. I'm <laughs> all that. But no. uh, I met Grab you. Grab onto the rocket ship. That, 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 that's that, the best way to do it. <laughs> exactly. And I met you originally in uh, Franklin. You guys had played a show at Kimbrough's Picking oh, Parlor. Yeah. And, and that, yeah, and uh, it was funny because at that point, that was actually the first time I'd ever seen her play live uh, <laughs> outside of a show where I met her when she was with Tony Harnell for that one gig with Striper. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I thought she was incredible. And then when I saw that show, I'm like, my God, this girl has got it all. And you were yeah. so cool. I met you and TJ that night after the show. And uh, I guess uh, a couple of months later, I booked the the show locally here at the the place called Fat Bites. And, uh, and, and that's when I, I really met you because I had time to talk to you and found out you were a, a fellow metal head and all that. So that was yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Which, which has been a learning experience with Tristan because yeah. he does not play metal. So right. I've, you know, I've had to really flex my, uh, <laughs> you know, music muscles a bit there. Um, sure. But it, it's been great just becoming a little more well-rounded because of her uh, yeah. learning how to sing learning how to harmonize to her uh play different styles so yeah a lot of fun yeah. that's awesome man so let's get uh on to what we are here for tonight to talk about rush tell me how you became a rush fan what were some of the first albums that you got into and mm. all of that so being a bass player i'm sure you worshiped getty pretty pretty early on yeah absolutely um so because I'm 37, I'm like Rush to me came on my radar like like maybe I don't know the test for Echo kind of stuff mm -hmm. might have been the first thing that you would hear on the radio. Maybe some of the counterpart stuff were still kind of evergreen on rock radio yep. when I was a kid. Like, um, but yeah, it was it was later Rush, like post Les Studio era Rush. Um, uh, yeah, um, so the R30 tour was the first time I saw him live and uh, I, it was the opening night of the R30 tour in Hartford nice. uh, I, I somehow managed to get lawn tickets for it and you know it was whatever but it was kind of a crappy night and I, WCCC the rock radio station in Hartford 106.9 Howard Stern's old uh, yeah. one, one of his like original ones uh they had a little stage set up for Rush Karaoke to win soundboard tickets. And uh, the, <laughs> I'm not sure they could get away with this now, but they had a, a helium tank with helium balloons <laughs> and uh, a little stage set up. I see where this is going. Yeah. 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 So you, you do you do that and then you, you sing. So I got picked out of like three other people. Thankfully, the other two people who did it were just hammered and didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> and I was like, I was third to go. So I, I had noticed like these people were getting no crowd reactions. It wasn't funny. So I tried to work the crowd, ham it up a little bit. And I ended yeah. up winning soundboard tickets for it. So nice. uh, sweet. I, I ended up, they didn't want me at the actual soundboard. So they put us over at the lighting director's table, me and my friend. And uh, <laughs> he actually let us uh, hit the pyro um, for 
oh what's uh, i forget forget the song where, where the dragon does the big pyro spot yeah. there i got to hit the button for that on the first night of the r30 tour it was, <laughs> it was very cool but That's like awesome. first it, it was wasted on me though i you know i was 17 or 18 years old right mm -hmm. and i i wish i could have that experience back and uh you know it now that i i've, I've got more knowledge of rush under my belt right did you get yeah. to meet the band that night no yeah. no and uh it, apparently like that was like kind of a tense night for the band like reading back about that r30 tour because that's the first one where neil decided he was going to like follow behind on the motorcycle and everything right. and it was the first tour after losing his his daughter and his, and his wife so right yeah. um uh, apparently there was kind of a truncated meet and greet that night between just Alex and Getty uh, and no what, Neil. For sure. what N Neil never did meet and greets. And no, I, I, no, I got yeah. to meet him. Uh, I got to meet Alex and, and uh, Getty, but I never, I, never I, met I, Neil. Yeah. Yeah. Me, so. so did you read, yeah, did you, no, that, that was my way or go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask you, did you read his book? Uh, uh, Neil's book that he wrote? Yeah. Uh, Ghost Rider. I've yeah. read. Yeah. And I, I love, love that amazing he, he's he has a few more manuscripts about his travels and stuff i, yeah. I would love to read as well but it, it, certainly like for for me the the amount of touring i've done and the uh not so luxurious touring i did with all that remains where like i i was the van driver for all of our <laughs> tours because i you know i wasn't 21 yet uh, when he when he writes about going like Trans Canada Highway west of Vancouver and everything. I remember a lot of those kind of white knuckle drives, and uh, yeah. it it was cool to see somebody you know, uh, you, you know, even with all that experience, like still having difficulty with some of those rides. It was right. it was cool to see some of the parallels there. But what a book! For it was sure. great, great book, absolutely. Yeah. And outside of Rush, uh, real quick, what are some of your main musical influences that uh, influenced you along the way? So I was a Beatles nerd growing up. Um, my my mom, of course, was a you know she was a flower child, and but my dad was uh, like uh, fifteen years older than her. He was born in nineteen forty, so he it, it was kind of an odd mix of like kind of the crooner and standard stuff, and then yeah. um, you know the British rock growing up. So Beatles for sure, Mountain Zeppelin, cool. Uh, and then when I was younger, my, my sister was married to Aldo Nova, yeah. the, the, uh, eighties rock guy there. So amazing the, guitarist. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, but a lot of, a lot of the, like right on the cusp of glam and hair, like, uh, a lot of the early to mid eighties kind of bands like that. I, I loved Aldo's work. Um, Blue Oyster Cult, like stuff yeah. like that. Uh, and <laughs> then them. growing up, I just turned into a straight metal head. You know, I, yeah. I heard I heard Countdown to Extinction by Megadeth and then <laughs> I, I went backwards in their catalog, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Very cool, man. I, every I love everything that you mentioned, by the way. Mm -hmm. Every well, one of those bands, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over our top ten favorite rush songs of all time. And yeah. uh, we're gonna we're gonna kind of go in a circle, and um, yeah. and then we'll end the night with a few honorable mentions because it's so hard to narrow down just ten songs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so uh, I guess uh, Matt, you're our guest. So why don't you pick your number ten song? Ten, I would say, animate off counterparts. Nice choice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice choice. Just a, a killer opening for yeah. the record. Um, the the production on this is so crisp. Uh, like compared to Roll the Bones, which is a little more digital sounding. So Counterparts really comes in with like almost a more organic sound. And you could tell they're maybe trying to go the Steve Albini route with some of the tones and like keep up with some of the grunge production happening at the yeah. time. But uh, uh, such a, a, a killer sounding album. And I, I think might have been the last one they did at List Studio in Morin yeah. Heights, Quebec. Yeah, and, and I think that coming off uh, Roll the Bones, Roll the Bones was a thin sounding record, and this one just yeah. had a lot more beef to it. And I, I love the part in Animate where everything stops and Neil plays that little drum feel going into that last section of the song. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, Absolutely. great choice. Great choice. And, I, and I'm like you, I like the whole album. 
I think it's a killer yeah. record. All right. So among the three of us, I'm kind of like the casual Rush fan. <laughs> That's um, fun. You know, I really like Rush, but, you know, they're not in my top 10. You know, they're not among my favorites. Right. Though I mm. love them. I saw them uh, how many? Five, six times. I think most we, of them we, with you. Yeah. And we saw the Counterparts tour with Candlebox opening. That's right. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Show. Yeah. yeah. It was very cool. <laughs> yeah. We saw the. Uh, Where are they now? <laughs> <laughs> we saw the Roll the Bones tour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which which tour did we see in Atlanta? Was that also Roll the Bones? That that was Roll the Bones. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Cool. Yep. So as a casual fan, my list is not going to be as deep cut. Um, yeah. It's going to be a lot of '80s stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. the stuff as I was growing up. I remember the most. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. But I I purposefully left out Tom Sawyer because that's just yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I might I might feel a little biased against it because I've heard it so much. So sure. I'm excluding that. Uh, but I'm going to start out with one of their more recent tracks, just just to include one that I liked that came out in the last decade or so. Uh, yeah. My number 10 is Working Them Angels. Nice. Yeah. Good song. Incredible song. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I, I like the sound of those records, too, the last few records. I thought they sounded really good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Nick Raskell and it's on the board for that. Uh, yeah. The Nashville guy there. Yeah. Uh, tremendous tones on that album it's big and it like jumps out of the speakers uh for sure exactly yeah all right well my number 10 uh i'm gonna go i've always said this darren likes his props by the way yeah i like props (laughs) (laughs) I, i can't i can't say that this is necessarily the best rush album of all time i wouldn't even say it's my favorite it's definitely the one that i've heard the most if mm. that makes sense. It, it, I yeah. mean, I'll, I'll listen to this album so many times. And I think the song Grand Designs is such an underrated song. And mm. I, I love Alex's guitar solo on it. And I know it's kind of a dark horse in all of this. But that's my number 10 uh, favorite Rush song of Grand all Design. time. Yep. Yeah. And, and I can Great say track. that, you know, with um, with Rush, my, my top 10 may change this time next year. It may be a whole different list of songs. <laughs> so yeah. keep that oh, yeah. in mind. But that's my number 10. <laughs> Absolutely. Good All choice. Right. Okay. So we're going to move on to year number nine. Number nine. Uh, hold on. Where'd my list go? Oh, stick it out. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> From Counterparts. Off, track two of Counterparts. Uh, the one two punch. Um, those songs back to back are perfect. It's a great way to start an album. Bass heavy, just such a great riff throughout. Um, Agreed. Big, yeah, big fat gnarly song, and kind of kind of stretching their muscles with the whole, uh, you know, get get maybe a little more hard rock, a little more grunge influence in there. Um, you, you know, that Rush has always with every album tried to at least uh, give a nod to the scene at the time. Um, True. Without ever being a part of it, but just being like, well, you know what? Power Windows. Let's try to get a little uh, more electronic just because everyone else is doing it. But we'll show you how Rush does it. Yeah. So it's cool to hear their version of what, uh, you know, just a hard rock band would sound like if all three members of Rush were in it. So, yeah, yeah, I, I love that song. Yeah, and and it was um, it was nice to hear them playing riffs again at yeah. that particular time, you know. For sure, uh, "Roll the Bones" wasn't a very riffy album, so to speak, you know. Weird and, album. Yeah, yeah, and uh, "Counterparts," man, it just punches in the gut right from the get go. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, Chris, well, you're up. All right, number nine. We'll go back to the '80s for this one, and uh, my number nine song by them is most definitely "Red Barchetta." Nice. Yeah. Great song. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I love the change up in the middle where when the chase is happening in the song. I just, I, it's so clean sounding. I love, I love that part of it. Yeah, yeah. it, it is. Sure. It's one of those that I think really marries the lyrics with the music just exceptionally totally. well. Totally, yeah. Tells a story and you can visualize it. You mm-hmm. know. Yep. Yeah, and uh, like that's just a masterclass in Neil Pert uh, lyric writing for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you, you know, just really sucking you into like, Oh, there's a whole story behind this song. Like, yeah, um, yeah he, he's, uh, he, he, uh, he went there with that song. It's a, it's a good one. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, my number nine is, uh, from hemispheres and the song circumstances. Mm. Uh, I, I just love that one, man. I just love the edge of it. It's almost like the precursor to what queen Queens Reich ended up doing eventually. Um, right. But I just love it. I love the riff, and it kind of gets right to the point 
uh, unlike the rest of the album, uh, which mm-hmm. I love. I love that too. Uh, but yeah, that's one of my favorite songs that's really stood the test of time and definitely more of a metal song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Great choice. Number eight. Mm-hmm. All right. So off Grace Under Pressure, uh, Red Sector A. Ooh, interesting. Very yeah. cool. It, it's a deep song, uh, yeah. lyrically deep, you know, like just um, kind of getting into the like war camp kind of like World War yeah. II themes with it as well. Very deep lyrically. Um, it, like the music in it as well. But it, I would say in terms of like uh, depth of lyric writing, that that's a, that's like one of Neil's best works right there. Yeah, absolutely. And that's about being uh, trapped in a, in a Nazi camp, right? That's uh, yeah. 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 It, it inspired by uh, like Getty's family and stuff like yeah. that. Um, they were so, Polish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Great choice. I love that one. (laughs) Cool. All right. Well, my number eight is Mystic Rhythms. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Power windows. I always, I love one of the things I love about Rush is the use of the keyboards and how that they can create this grand wall of sound. This just amazing production. And that song brings that out, I think. And, you know, I don't know if you ever heard this, this map, but it's kind of weird. At that time when they were making records like Grace Under Pressure, and power windows you know that metallica wanted them to produce master of puppets they actually wanted them to produce uh the one before that ride the lightning too but their schedules didn't line up they wanted getty to produce it no uh, shit yeah, oh, yeah absolutely yeah. yep so they were humongous rush fans mm-hmm. could you and, imagine yeah i know <laughs> i know interesting all right this is, i'm up right you're up yeah, all right number eight my next one is from the 80s and i love this album a lot of people don't know this signals Started out being a Getty Lee solo album, believe it or not. He had these songs oh, that were yes, it did. He was he was kind of contemplating doing a solo album and three or four of the songs off here. I know subdivisions for sure was gonna be a solo song. And then they're like, ah, oh, what the hell? We'll we'll make it a rush album. <laughs> From this album, Digital Man, uh, which is kind of ironic because it's actually the song that kind of broke their partnership with Terry Brown up. Uh they had uh one of their rare fights over that song. He didn't like it. And the band loved it, and I love it. I think it's got some of the the best moments of them playing uh, as a trio with the 80 sound that they ever did. I love the guitar solo. I think Neil yeah. plays tremendous on all records, but on Signals in particular, I love his plan. Oh, that. yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, absolutely. Great choice. So, seven? Number seven. Number seven. Same album, Analog Kid. <laughs> uh, I love I love the change in uh, meters and feel and everything like that, like the like the very like fast driving double time uh, yeah. stuff. Then just breaking down for those halftime courses with the big pads underneath. Absolutely, uh, I I love it. it. It's just like everyone knows the album for subdivisions for sure, but Analog Kid is. Uh, that that's like a one for me or like one a for me you, you know what i love about that song i love how neil in a lot of ways kind of keeps a, a really simple beat throughout that song if you listen yeah. to specifically where the guitar which the guitar solo rips your head off i think that's one of alex's <laughs> best moments ever but i like how simple neil plays in that song coming out of the solo it's just like it's like really simple uh snare hits but it works so well oh yeah it, it, it yeah, it just sounds like he's hitting kick snare throughout. Yeah, like the beginning part of that solo with nothing else. Which exactly, uh, exactly. You know, he he's not one to be uh, a minimal player for sure. <laughs> no doubt about it. Excellent choice, and that would make my honorable mentions. I've got it written down for sure. So mm-hmm. nice choice, my friend. My number seven. This is the first song that's actually going to be a repeat. Red Sector A, and everything you said, ditto. <laughs> Perfect. Great I- plan. And yeah. all that, yeah. There you go. All right. All right. Well, my number seven, it is right. Yep. I'm gonna go with uh, Limelight of uh, the Mighty, which I do think is the best album they ever did. Uh, oh, yeah. And I, I know that's kind of cliche to say that. Mm. Moving Pictures, Limelight. I think it's the best solo that Alex ever played, in my opinion. And I've never gotten sick of that song, no matter how many times I've heard it. I just absolutely love it. Oh yeah just dynamic throughout the entire song it's yep. it's it's perfection and yeah moving pictures is you know that's their 
that's their Big Mac or their Whopper right there. That's their money yep. album yep. with all yep. the yep. singles. But there's a reason for it. They're great songs and they stand up. So yeah, great for choice. Sure. All right. So what are we set seven or We're six? On to number six. six now. Yeah. Six. Uh, co- coming in on uh, Power Windows, uh, The Big Money. All right. I, I like it because it is just the wackiest Rush song there is. Yeah. It, it's uh, They've done nothing like it before that, and there's nothing really like it afterwards. It, it's just a very uh, quirky song. But I love it. It's undeniably Rush at the same time true and it's very powerful i mean it's yeah. it's actually a heavy song when you get right down to it it's very heavy yeah yeah, yeah. and we'll talk yeah. more about that one later okay <laughs> 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 all right so my number six is from the the world of bones album it's ghost of a chance okay yeah. cool yeah that's yeah. definitely alex's best moment on that album in my opinion i yeah. love the guitar solo on that one yeah, yeah. I, lo- I love the general feel of that 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 yeah. song to me just feels great it's got an obvious to it that and it was it. very different for them at that time. That song was yeah. like it's really sticks out in the context of their catalog. Very different song. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. Very mm-hmm. nice. All right. And uh this is another, I guess you would call it um I don't know, a not so popular song, uh, outside of you know, hardcore rush fans, which hopefully is what's watching right now. Mm-hmm. Uh Grace Under Pressure's the album, The Enemy Within. Um, Mm -hmm. One thing about the 80s Rush albums that I really, really like is I think even though it's not as heavy as the classic stuff from the 70s and all that, I think it's got Getty's best vocals. Um, Mm. Getty at that point, I think, was really into melody. And I don't know, I kind of liked his voice meshed up with a lot of the padded keyboard sounds. Um, Yeah. That that song to me, and and you mentioned this, Rush would kind of like try to do something that was in the context of the times. That that song has a lot of police influence in it. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like the police on steroids. And uh, I just absolutely love it. I love uh, Alex's plan. You know, he around that time, Alex was really experimenting. Like one minute, he would kind of sound like Andy Summers. Uh, he would do stuff on Power Windows that reminded me a lot of The Edge. And yeah. I just thought it was a real cool period of of his guitar playing. And me being a guitar player, I always liked what he did as the only guitar player in the band. You stick oh, yeah. Alex, you stick Alex in any other band, he would stick out like a sore thumb. But he mm. just made it work so well uh, within Rush. And I really loved his playing in that period. Yeah, absolutely. 100% agree. What are we at? Five? Number five. Number yeah. five. So off, hold your fire. Time stands still. I Beautiful. Love it. Ah. Yeah. It, uh, you know, uh, undeniably 1987 as well. Uh, yeah. You know, it's uh, about as Canadian and cheese of a song as you can get. Yeah. But the the tone of the bass the the roto toms everything uh the yeah big edge influence there like just the you know fourth position strat tone he has throughout yeah. um it it's such a lush beautiful song and then you know of course having uh a guest vocalist on it you know yeah. at a word with amy man uh just love it it's cheesy but powerful song beautiful song great production very lush completely agree and i love amy mann and i i mm. think uh, she was the perfect choice for a song like that yeah yeah, yeah. and cool. once again we'll talk about that one more in a little bit. <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> all right so my number five is actually spirit of radio cool yeah, yeah. And i love this song because you know as a teenager i wanted to be on the radio that was my dream yeah. you know my dream job and mm-hmm. uh, so that song just really spoke to me lyrically. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and I think coming out of the 70s, you know, that song was released in 1980. I think it was a very cool beginning of a new direction for them where they were doing more short, concise songs. Yeah. And uh, and once again, I think that was really the moment where Eddie or Eddie, what am I saying? I think that was the, the moment where Getty started singing a little more melodically and not singing everything in the stratosphere. Mm-hmm. And uh, it totally worked. So great choice, my friend. Yeah. yeah. Great choice. Yeah. Great choice. Uh, all right, and uh, my number five song is from Power Windows. We already talked about it. Matt uh, spoke of it eloquently, The Big Money. Uh, I think it's great. I think the video was very cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, everything that you said, I completely agree with. <laughs> 
Beautiful. <laughs> Good to see we're in agreement here. Yeah. yeah. All right. Number four is where we're at. Y Y Z. Cool. It's a, you know, that's that's a that's the go to if uh, you, you know, say you got someone who's like, I don't, I don't really listen to Rush or. You know, if you want to show someone Rush, you you show them that YouTube video of them in the studio doing that. You know, with the isolated tracks and everything. Yeah. It is. It it's just that's their version of hey, want to see me do a hundred push ups? Like, <laughs> like no one can touch it. Everyone it's masterful. Tries to cover the song, uh, no one has ever done it justice. It's its own. Right. It's Rush's stamp on the music world of like, this is what we accomplished. And uh, right. we, we did it pre Pro Tools, one take, you know, just it, it's perfect. It's, it's I, such a great. I agree. And what, what's funny, you just triggered something that I watched recently in my memory bank. Uh, there's a guy that's on uh, YouTube that goes around and he'll, he'll put everything in perfect pitch or he'll quantize stuff and show you how different it sounds. Well, he quantized the drums and uh, Tom Sawyer. It didn't sound any different at all. <laughs> He's like, it doesn't sound any, it's perfect already. Course, and, yeah. and it was funny because some songs like they'll quantize like Led Zeppelin. It just sound like a completely different song. Yeah, it's just right. so strange. But Neil and all of those, they were at the peak of their powers as far as yeah. players go on that song. I completely agree. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right. So my number four is Distant Early Warning. Great choice. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I, I, I've always loved their keyboard heavy songs. And this is I, this is one of them that I, yeah, I really love the sound of it. Yeah. And, you know, that's <laughs> a good question. Do you think, uh, Matt, that the, the Rush 80s stuff gets uh, more respect in retrospect? Like uh, at the time, a lot of people were jumping off their bed. I remember it. I'm a little older than you. So mm -hmm. I remember when those records were coming out that, you know, some people hung with them through anything. I was one of those. Uh, mm -hmm. But a lot of people was like, ah, they don't kick enough ass anymore and all right. that stuff. But I, I love the 80s period. And I think in retrospect, I, I do think it's more appreciated. Especially, you know, you get because what's the old saying that, uh, you know, history repeats itself or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you <laughs> maybe at the time or or like, you know, when I was a teenager or something like that, time standstill would be something I would just listen to in headphones more than like, you know, <laughs> get the fellas in the car. And <laughs> right, right. Still. But, you know, like a band like the 1975 will come around. Like or, yep. you know, a lot of these bands where they're using similar production styles or similar pads or like trying to achieve those tones again. Right. It's like, ah, OK, there is. Yeah, there there are people out here with the same kind of uh, appreciation for this, for sure. Right. Yeah, right. So, yeah, yeah. It, it, the, its influence is undeniable, but I'm sure at the time it was, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, all of that, of all of that seemed to start with this album right here, Signals. Uh, yeah. That's that's when we knew that something was different um, happening in the Rush camp, mm -hmm. and with the song specifically, Subdivisions, which I think is what it has one of the best uses of analog sense of all time. I think it's just a masterful oh, yeah. song. And uh, I've always loved it. Love to this day can listen to it anytime and enjoy it. And that's yeah. my number four song. Um, uh, subdivisions. Yeah. Signal. All right. Dude, signals. It's, yeah. it's great. Three uh, free will off permanent waves. Uh, I, I, I think it is. Uh, it, 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 it like rides the line of, catchy song yet extremely complicated music yes yes so they it, they have a signature way of taking uh either an odd meter an odd mode something like that and still being able to write a catchy song with it i think free will is a great example of it Agreed. Odd time signature but like you can the casual listener can still pick up on that melody well so, said very yeah. well said i agree i yeah. agree okay. A band where, you know, if you're going to do something in 7-4, still drive home that 4 so people yeah. can, like, nod their heads. Can, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's the perfect example of that. Yeah. Right. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Thanks. My number three is the opening track of Hold Your Fire, Force 10. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Again, That's that wall of sound. And what a great marriage of lyrics to 
you know, music. Yeah. yeah. And, and I kind of felt at the time that was like the quintessential Rush song on that album. But they were yeah. kind of like, they like to kick their albums off with what they felt was the quintessential Rush song. And mm-hmm. I think that's a good example, a great start to a great yeah. album. And when that's cranked to 11, you actually feel like you're in a hurricane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Such great production on that. All right. Well, since we're talking about Hold Your Fire, my number three. <laughs> Is actually probably lyrically my favorite song of all time, Mission. Uh, mm-hmm. I love I love the middle section uh, where it kind of goes into an orchestrated little section, and then everything, you know, uh, the pace slows down, and you just hear those padded sounds. And I, I just think it's such a powerful song lyrically, musically. It it you know this whole album is really good about you know meshing the lyrics. Uh, mm-hmm. with with the music and you know this was probably their lightest album of all time perhaps but yeah. i love it i absolutely love it i remember the day it came out i was there and uh, i think it holds up well overall and it's kind of funny we've each mentioned a song off this and yeah. um, my number three is is mission i'll love it till the day i die yeah great choice number two we'll we'll do uh, a little nashville tie-in here yeah. um mm-hmm. uh B U two B, nice. Clockwork Angels. Yeah, it's what a friggin' riff in that song. Love it. Um, yeah, it, it, to it's so crazy because it, it's you know their their final studio album there, but they are just on uh, on all tens with that song. It is yeah. it's so heavy. Um, such great like almost like a post hardcore or like a metal hard rock influence to it almost like a breakdown part like keeping up with the times even that late into their career and great energy on that song that by far yeah. was my favorite track on that record yeah by far yeah. great choice man great cool. choice thank you yeah all right so for my my number two is gonna be a little bit of a story time when <laughs> my parents moved us from nashville tennessee to hendersonville tennessee i was in junior high mm-hmm. and um this song right here subdivisions Mm. feels like it was written about my experience when we moved to the suburbs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The whole be mm-hmm. cool or be cast out. Cause yeah. that was the that first was- point in my life where I actually felt class divisions among my classmates. Right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that song just touched me to my core. Yeah. And yeah. To this day when I hear and I hear those lyrics, I think of that time. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, Rush were one of those bands for me that um, no matter what mood I was in, happy, sad, I could listen to them and be transported to somewhere else. And mm-hmm. whether I was going to the store or going to the bowling alley with my folks or whatever, Rush would come on and, and it would send me to another world. And yeah. uh, there were very few bands at that time that had that effect on me. And I, mm-hmm. I got so into them at one time that I listened to them constantly. And, uh, and, and, you know, I started listening to them in the mid eighties and then I went back and got their earlier stuff and every album was just deeper, darker and different. And I just love that. Yeah, about them. yeah um, absolutely. Yeah. So great choice, Chris. And yeah, and well said. Nice. All right. Well, my number two is the aforementioned uh, by Mr. Dice free will and everything mm-hmm. he said about it. I uh, totally completely agree with. Mm-hmm. And I thought uh, um, Getty rather was really using his voice really cool at that point. You know, like the, the middle section where he goes, he reverts back to the really high pitch vocals it's so it was so much more effective when he chose his moments to do that. Everything that Matt said about the music, how it was laid out, how it's real complex, but yet it sounds uh, I, mean, I don't want to say simple, but you can you can hang with it, even if you're just a casual music fan. Uh, yeah. There's folks. This is like hard to do. <laughs> Trust yeah. me. And they were the masters at that. You know, some bands like that came on uh, after them that were obviously influenced by Dream Theater. They're, you know, as an example, they're not for everybody. Mm-hmm. They could lose right. people pretty quick with their complexity. I thought yeah. Rush straddled that line so well, and especially on songs like Free Will. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's an evergreen rock radio hit. Mm-hmm. All for these sure. years later, Time- and it timeless. still makes no sense musically. It, right. It's incredible. Right. All right. My number one is probably the weirdest number one, but this song is always spoke to me, even though it is late rush, uh, off snakes and arrows, armor and sword. 
Very cool. That Very is my cool. favorite Rush song. Lyrically, it is just, um, you can tell it's a not so veiled story of his daughter's car crash almost. It, exactly. You, um, it, and, and lyrically so deep, musically so deep, and so many different um, stanzas to it where, you know, it, it's just a beautiful uh, arpeggiated uh, acoustic part broken down to a halftime driving riff uh wall right. of sound guitars so the song has everything and and i don't know it's always spoke to me lyrically for sure very cool that's in my honorable mention so a good choice my friend that, that's that's an excellent song and and people don't have enough appreciation you know I, I don't know some people get to a point where they don't want to hear anything new or, or recent and, and now unfortunately we'll never hear any new rush uh, now that Neil passed away. And by the way, I was at the Rush Tribute in Nashville where you played The Trees, I think it was, with that band, and, and you kicked its ass. It was very uh, well done. Thank you. I, I remember talking to you before. You're like, I'm so nervous, man. I'm like, man, don't be <laughs> nervous. <laughs> and I you killed it. That, I clammed that one little riff right before it goes into the the like uh, uh, part with the pads and the little yeah. wood block. But other than that, yeah, I... <sighs> <laughs> that, that was just like, all right, you count to you count to four, and I'm going to start playing. And anything that happens after this, I'm not responsible for. So, <laughs> <laughs> and and Tristan did a, a kick ass job on uh, Show yeah. Don't Tell. She, it's she such an odd song to do, but yeah, she yeah. killed it. She killed it. Yeah, very cool. All right. Well, you're okay, up. So my number one uh, was mentioned already once by Matt. And um, my number two and number one song can both point to a specific place in my life. And mm. my number one song, Time Stands Still. Cool. Um, mm. I remember there was a point of transition in my life where, you know, I was going through a thing. But um yeah, I remember hearing uh, playing this song over and over and over again, and mm. it just it just refreshed me and rejuvenated me for the next stage of my life. Nice. And, uh, that's why I love it. It's it's the, mainly the lyrics. Of course, the song has a great feeling to it as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, like Mike, like Matt said, it's just a beautiful song. It is. Yeah. It really yeah. is a beautiful song. Yeah. And the All lyrics right. are poignant. It's a uh, you know, the, it's a great lyrical theme to it. Yeah, for sure, yeah. timeless and. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very nice. All right. Well, my number one uh, Rush song, we're going to go way back for this one. Uh, I just think it's the most brilliant song they ever did. Xanadu. <laughs> of, I, I just, man, I love that song. I know it's yep. weird, but, and, and it's 11 minutes long or whatever. I think it's 1108 or something, but off of Farewell to Kings. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just think it's such an interesting song. And uh, I love the heaviness of it. It's produced just immaculately for its time, 1977. Mm -hmm. I oh, think yeah. it sounds, you know, if it came out today and it sounded just like that, I'd say, that sounds freaking awesome. <laughs> and uh, I, I just I just love it. So that is my number one Rush song of all time. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah, and, yeah what, what a... <laughs> <laughs> lyrical departure from like a working man or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, uh, Don, Don honeydew, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. Well, well, one thing we wanted to do was we're going to throw in a few honorable mentions. So if it didn't make your top 10, but you still felt that was relevant, Matt, what are a few of yours? Uh, so one song that always makes me smile when it comes up is, uh, it, it it's, you know, instrumental there, but the main monkey business off uh, Snakes and Arrows. Cool. Uh, cool. It, it, it was such a cool song, and it's it's like maybe their two thousands version of an of a YYZ, but a little less yeah. complicated yeah. for sure. Right. Just right. like here you are in the studio with us. Here's us jamming out. Here's us on on all ten and uh, enjoy. Just it's six minutes of them jamming and sounding incredible. I agree. What else you got? Let me see. Uh, let me go back to that list. Uh, so, "Roll the Bones," the song "Roll the Bones." Yeah, I and I know it got so much crap, and uh, you know the rap part is what it is. But <laughs> it <laughs> it almost like had a purpose in their career. It was uh, yeah, I you agree. Know, polarizing, which yeah. 
they were never afraid to do it, you know, looking at big money or time stand still or, you know, any of the super quirky stuff. They they kind of doubled down on that with right. Rome. I agree. I agree. Nice choices. Yeah. All right. I'll just name off a few of mine, too. Um, in my honorable mentions, I had Limelight in here and I had Big Money <laughs> and Marathon, I think, is a fantastic Love yeah. Marathon. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I love the trees. Very cool. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, great, great choices. I mean, is, is, are there any bad Rush songs? Uh, maybe one or two, but <laughs> not, not many. Not many. So none of us, none of us set closer to the heart. Was that on uh, anyone's honorable mention? Uh, it's not on my honorable mention. No. I do love it. Um, I would say <laughs> La Vila Strangiato. Uh, yeah, love that uh, anthem off of Fly By yeah. Night. The song yep. Fly By Night, Vital Signs. I really like that one. I think that was a really different song. It's funny. When I first heard Moving Pictures, I wasn't crazy about Vital Signs, and it may be one of my favorite songs by them now. I just really like it and very um, police influence, you know, but much darker. Um, what else do I have here? The Analog Kid. You mentioned that one. Of course, Time Stands Still. Uh, Hemispheres, um, <laughs> the song, you know, um, that kicks off the, the album. So yeah, there's a few yeah. of my quote, but yeah. So Earth man. Shine. That's the one I forgot. Oh uh, yeah. Shine. That's that, a good one. That lost album for sure. Uh yeah. Vapor Trails. But Earth Shine is uh that's a that's a great track. I loved Vapor Trails when it came out. I, and I saw them uh, I think either their first or second night on that tour. And, and this was after Neil had, you know, had his tragedy, as you mentioned, with his uh his wife passing away and and prior to that his daughter died in a car wreck. So it was just a real uh I don't know, it just felt like a a real comeback, you know, and the fans just appreciated it so much. I know I did. Yeah. So, very cool. All right. I know we have some Rush fans out there watching. So what's your favorite Rush song? Drop it down in the comments. Click like on the video. Yeah. And uh, we're going to play some trivia now. Matt's going to stick around. And, all right. Uh, and we're going to all play together. So. We'll give him first shot at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ready, Matt? Sure. Get our thinking caps on. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. This category is real name. Now oh, we've had Lord. this. We've had these cards before, where you have to guess the real name of a particular artist, and it's tripped us up a few times. So let's see how. Yes, we do. it has. What was George Michael's birth name? Give us the options. Okay, the options are <laughs> Nathan Paul Gerard. No. Uh, Giorgio. I can't even pronounce that. Then it won't be that Hannah one. Yeah, that's got. Yeah, that's got, no, this can't be it. Michael Allen Hopald or George Michael Whammer. <laughs> George Michael Whammer. Yeah, that, that's it. George uh, Michael Whammer. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm going to say it's either one. I said no on the first one. I'm going to say Nathan Paul Girard. Well, it's either. I'm going to. I don't know, man. This is tough. I don't know if yeah. I ever heard his real name. I don't think I have either. <laughs> I would say Nathan Paul Gerard. Yeah. Am I wrong? Uh, yeah. That'd be the first choice. I think I'm going to go with that too. Okay. We're going with A. We are wrong. It's the one that oh, I couldn't good. pronounce. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so wow. that's why George Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Giorgio Caresos. Pin, uh, oh, I don't know. No I'm, wonder he gonna, changed his damn name. I'm going to put it on the screen for the, everyone else to read. I've never I heard that in that. my life. Wow. Yeah. We learned something today. Okay. Well, there you go. Oh, yeah. That's a, I, I just Googled it here. That's quite, quite the Greek name right there. <laughs> yes, it is. For sure. Well, Matt, thank you for joining us on this yeah. uh, show. It's been a lot of fun, man. And, thank you. And I will see you very soon uh, with the whole Tristan thing. So keep rocking. Absolutely. Nice talking to you guys. Yeah, All you right, as well. You. And uh, we'll be back night. again with another episode very soon. So All take right. care. See you. Take care. All right.